Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show, our wild card reaction show. Paul joined by Jack Weinberger, Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia, and Zach Bloomquist, the best executive producer in the game. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Anyone who's listening, we thank you guys very much. We just reached 5,000 subscribers. That's the third of our fourth pillar for our main goal. I thought we were over, like 5.4. We are, we are. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like 5.4, almost 5.5 now. Uh, we're chasing down 10K. That's been our big goal since we started this channel was, okay, get to 10K and then reevaluate from there. So for everyone who's listening and enjoys, please hit subscribe. And for everyone who has been subscribed and commenting, you know, we see every comment. We love reading them. Um, we've had a great time really on this run here. It's been pretty fun doing all this stuff. It's unbelievable. Uh, you can listen it, it on Spotify. Is, on. Yeah, go ahead. Go it ahead. has not been fun watching the Packers win. I no, got this no, has been oh, fun. This up, has been fun. Yeah, yeah. You've watching had, the you've Packers had a great win. Great time watching the Packers no, no, no. win, Ziggy. Watching the Packers <laughs> win has not been fun. And Ziggy's if you had see, a great time watching the Packers win, it's he's full of nonsense when he says outrageous. that. As you can see, I, we should address the elephant in the room: is that unfortunately I am wearing this Jordan Love Packers go jersey. pack go. I put it on and looked in the mirror today, and I just I I, I went oh God, this is this. So is now horrible. we are all out of the Packers closet. Officially. No, 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 dude. This, yeah, this doesn't here. feel good. It might go with the eyes a little bit, but I this doesn't feel good. I'm not happy about it. And let me say this. This was a pain in the ass to get this jersey, too. So for all the Packers fans who are, are, are happy about this right now, be even more satisfied in that I'm driving around yesterday trying to find a Packer jersey to wear. I figured I made this bet that I'd bet wear Packer gear. Let's go all the way and, and wear Jordan Love because he's the guy that's really been centered around on this journey. You can't find a Jordan Love jersey anywhere. I'm going to you know a bunch of different stores in the area, and again, we live in Jersey, so it's not lined up with Jordan Love shirts. I was shocked but... you found one. To be honest. <laughs> well, no, there's there's one in the, by the Meadowlands, by where the Giants play in American Dream Mall, and they have every single jersey sold out of Packers, sold out of Packers shirts. I mean, the Packers are the team right now, I, man. And, and I'm team. just sitting there going like, oh my god, I have to buy this. $90 youth large Jordan Love shirt. And now I'm sitting here like an idiot wearing a Packer well, green. We do have some good news, though. Folks are in the market for Packers gear that's not sold out. There's a certain uh, PaulFarringtonShow.com t-shirt that yeah. uh, a certain Jack is wearing. Check it out here. here yeah, 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 show the camera. Yeah, move, move your mic out of the way. Yeah. The I Love Love shirt, which actually a lot of Packers fans have bought. I like that shirt. If, if it wasn't, you know, Packer oriented, I might even... Oh, I've, I've but, been uh, sleeping in this yeah. shirt, waking up in this shirt, yeah. eating in this shirt. And uh, <laughs> I've had this shirt for the last 72 hours. God, Packers fans driving us crazy. But we do appreciate every, all the Packers fans who have been listening. It is a lot of fun going back and forth with you as you in, in, endure, not endure, but you embark on yet another fairy tale season. You know what I think? I think if the Packers beat San Francisco on a Saturday night on the road, we should all come in. To studio on the next on the reaction show or whatever the next show with our faces painted yellow and green. Yeah, it's there'll be I another bet. There'll that. be another bet. Let me think about what it'll be for this weekend. So let's let's dive into it here because we've had 24 hours now. We're recording Monday night. We've had 24 hours to really process this 48-32 ass whooping from the Packers. Don't let the score fool you. It was 48-16 in the middle of the fourth quarter. Ziggy and I recorded the reaction, Jack, at the in the at the end of the third quarter. Like we, we, we never do that, you know, cause you never know what's going to happen. We saw the, I think it was the touchdown to, what was it? Who caught the craft? I think, I think. Kraft. Yeah. It was that ridiculous back foot oh my fade God, how through the defenders. Was. Um, no, I could tell this game was over on the first drive. Yeah. Green Bay looked awesome from the start here and it was just, yeah, a total beat down. Packers fans are so funny to me because now that the game's over, they're all like, Oh, this is unbelievable. But you know, We'll lose to San Francisco probably, but it's been a great year. I'm like, you guys are... Do you know Detroit almost burned down its city from winning a wild card game? And you guys just beat the number two seed in their building by... You know, you're winning by 30 points, and it's just so casual. It is and just your quarterback, so, you want to know I mean, why? It's because they're used to winning. They're used to winning. They're they're used used to maybe winning, that's right? why they're winning. Feeling, Paul. They're winners. We're used to losing. <laughs> your quarterback had, what, the highest passer rating in playoff history? Jack, Jack, right? Jack. His QBR was, was 99.3. First or was player, it the highest QBR? Listen, listen to this. First player to post a 99 QBR in a playoff game since ESPN inv- started the metric in 06. Beat Josh Allen's 13-second game performance of 98.8. Plus 1.05 EPA per drop, ba- drop back. Six most in the next-gen stats era for any game since 2016. 
and his 157.2 passer rating is the highest in a road playoff game in the Super Bowl era. I mean, hell, like this guy's the best quarterback left in the in the playoffs right now for crying out loud. I'm not so it's, sure they lose to San Francisco. I mean, this offense is clicking on all cylinders. These receivers are great. Aaron Jones is a monster. No, I mean, they held the Cowboys offense in check. This was total domination. Yeah. I mean, I said, it, points. Yeah. I said it during our preview show. I was surprised to see the Packers getting very little respect because there were lots of ways they matched up well against the Cowboys. Yep. Paul, what were three keys for the Packers to win this game? The number one key that we had was, well, the first key that we had was slowing down Micah Parsons, which Jordan Love hit the ground how many times? Zero. Not sacked once in this game. I mean, he, he, you know, he took some pressure, but not he sacked He handled it time. just fine. Actually, Zero sacks. He dominated Aaron pressure. Jones. I think he was Aaron four Jones. for four under pressure for like 118 yards and a touchdown. Aaron Jones was our second key. Uh, 118 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. You know, you said it, Ziggy. He was doing the same thing that, that he did a couple of years ago in Dallas, counting his touchdowns, mocking the Dallas crowd in the end zone. And the last one, we said, get after Dak Prescott, make him uncomfortable. Now, Dak was just off to begin with. It was just bizarre. I don't know what's going on with him in these in playoff games sometimes, but Dak was off to begin with. But the Green Bay front, they got to him again. Four sacks in this game for them. You know, they've come alive over the past three weeks. It was it's just this this unbel it's like a renaissance happening in Green Bay right now where everybody at the same time is playing their best football and it's spearheaded by number ten, their quarterback, you know, arguably playing, like you said, the best quarterback in the league right now <laughs> into some ways. Um it was it was unbelievable. There, there were moments of this game. We said in the reaction show, when they had the pick six to go up 27 nothing, I believe, that's that's when I looked over at people in the room and I went, holy crap, Like they, they can win the Super Bowl. Yeah, if you beat Dallas by 20 on the road, of course you can. I mean, we reached a point in this game where Jordan Love would drop back to pass and the second he released the ball, I'm like, I'd bet a million bucks this ball is caught. One of these stu young studs is running wide open for a completion, and, and that happened to be the case. I mean, that was one of the most stunning things to see this game was the Dallas defense. It's generally been pretty good. I get that they've had a couple bad games against the lead quarterbacks, and mm -hmm. apparently Jordan Love is one of those, but they've been very good. I can't remember the last time in an NFL game I saw that many receivers running that wide open at the NFL level. It just doesn't happen. No, no, Florida had the perfect game plan. Go this, watch the play on Kraft's touchdown. And just look at how wide open he is. There's no one within 15 yards. Jordan Love, he's he's got some weapons, man. No, this, team, this team is, is is full of weapons. And and you know what's funny here is as we're talking about the Green Bay win, it's it's not an overreaction to be as enthusiastic about this as we are. Now, listen, listen there's a difference between enthusiasm being a positive thing and just being like, we're flat out shell-shocked at the performance. I think everybody was, even the announcers. You listen to Kevin Burkhart. He's like, what the hell is happening here? Um, and when I talk about the guys coming on at the right time across the entire roster, the Packers didn't have a 100-yard rusher or receiver in the first 14 games. Aaron Jones has gone over 100 yards in four straight games. Uh, Romeo Dobbs went over 100 yards for the first time in his career. They've had three different receivers hit the 100-yard mark in the past four games. This is, it truly is uh, the coming together of a young and talented team and what scares me about them, if I'm a 49er fan, is that when you give young talent belief, that's when they start to become fearless. And when you have a fearless group of young guys, that's when you're really dangerous. Because they're not going into this matchup against San Francisco thinking, oh, here, here are the number one seeded 49ers that are going to push us around. That may have been the case earlier in the year. But this Green Bay team, with the way they're playing at this moment, doesn't fear anyone. I, I wanted to ask you guys, do you think San Francisco, if given the choice... Let's just say Tampa Bay wins. We're recording during the game right now. If Tampa Bay wins and you have Detroit and Green Bay, among those three teams, is Green Bay the biggest feared team for San Francisco? The most feared? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, you're looking at a quarterback who's had one turnover in the last nine games. Uh, a team who just beat Dallas on the road. It wasn't even close from the start. I mean, Detroit and Dallas played in a back and forth game. Dallas won the game. Uh, Green Bay is a team who mauled Detroit in their home stadium and now just mauled Dallas. Uh, I think Love right now is the best quarterback in football. Aaron in football. Like, I, I, Aaron Jones is running all over the place, which opens things up. They're very three-dimensional on that offensive side of the ball. 
I want to see Green Bay. I would take Detroit or, or even over Philly too. Let's say Philly wins. Yeah, I take Detroit, Tampa, or Philly over Green Bay. I mean, the Niners get the crap out of Philly and Philadelphia. This Philly team stinks. Ziggy, like you you agree with that? Here are the quarterback. The 49ers defense is very good. They've got the excellent numbers. Here are the quarterbacks they've faced since Week Ten: Trevor Lawrence, Baker Mayfield, two runs of Geno Smith, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Lamar, Sam Howell, and Carson Wentz. Jordan Love is at least the second best quarterback on that list. And the 49ers, we saw what they were able to do against Lamar Jackson. Nothing. So however good the defense has been, the rules of the game are different when you are facing an elite quarterback. And of any team in the NFC, I think even including the 49ers, Jordan Love is probably the best quarterback left, right? So yeah, you've got to be the most scared of them. The the other side of the ball is... and. I can't stress enough the Packer run game. As you just said, the last, what, four or five weeks, Jones has gone over the century he's mark. Been, he's been a monster. He's, he's been awesome. And I think having him run like that obviously opens the door for Jordan Love, these receivers in the passing game. This run game needs to stay solid to have a chance to beat San Francisco. But probably the strongest, best team in football up front on the defensive end of the ball is San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I think if Aaron Jones is bottled up, it becomes tougher for Jordan Love and these these young yeah, guys. Yeah, you're gonna have to have a you know a similar <laughs> you're gonna have to have a similar uh, opening to the game. I, I believe it, against San Francisco, we talked about it for the Steelers. We said you need to come out and hit Buffalo in the mouth, and they didn't. They had to play catch up the whole game. They lose. Mm-hmm. Green Bay, I don't like accepting the toss when you win, but you know they took the ball, shoved it down their throat, and you know, had their foot on the gas the entire game. Uh, it's that's the approach you need to have against San Francisco. The defense needs to show up the same way. I mean, you just beat Dallas, but this is the real test here in the NFC. This is the the cream of the crop. And if they win that game, I'm I'm telling you, we're going to Green Bay. They're, well, they're going to the Super Bowl if they beat if they beat San Francisco because they'll they'll beat Detroit. They'll I think beat Tampa. Jones, they'll beat it's. Jones needs to, to go. Though. Jones needs to go over a hundred again and get in the end zone. Mm-hmm. Under a hundred, they lose the game to San Francisco. Well, and we'll have, you know, we're going to talk three keys to the 49ers game. We'll have a uh, more in-depth preview. But right now, it's, uh, you know, another great brand ri- brand rivalry, brand matchup here. 49ers, Packers, right after 49ers, Cowboys, or pa- uh, I'm sorry, Packers, Cowboys. It's going to be a lot of fun for the Packer fans. It always is. In, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, so we'll, 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 there'll be a lot more to come on the Packers this week. Let's, uh, let's go down to Houston. Speaking of another Texas team. CJ Stroud right now, guys, it, you know, we talk about Jordan Love playing phenomenal football. CJ Stroud is right there with him, you know, borderline top five quarterback. I said, yes, top five in the league right now. He's been everything and more to this Texan team since coming in. It's kind of bizarre to see a rookie be given the captain of the team, but both him and Will Anderson did that. And you're seeing why on this playoff run here. I mean, he has just been sensational <laughs> from the start here with, with the Texans. They go and beat the crap out of the Browns in the second half. There's a good game. And that was a good game midway through a third quarter, similar to the Packer game. Both of them flip on a pick six. Um, and, and from that, then on out, it was really domination for Houston. The Texans, since their inaugural season, have five playoff wins and the Cowboys only have four, which is, you know, think about some of the struggles Houston has had over the years. I mean, that is a, uh, it's the worst number for the Cowboys fans when you think about it. But as we look ahead to this next matchup here, you know, they have Baltimore coming up. I think everyone believes that Houston can get the job done, but it'll be a lot to take on. Um, when you see this Houston team, Jack, are you thinking that this, the sky's the limit for them or is they is it probably the end of the road here? Well, first of all, I, I think uh, I think Stephen A. Smith screwed the Browns this week when he came out and publicly said that uh, – CJ Stroud and the Texans have no chance. And then Stroud got wind of that. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no chance? All right, bet. Let's just go beat the crap out of this team. Yeah, can't give him motivation. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, obviously, when it, it's, it's similar to Green Bay, this is a team with, with young talent who are firing on all cylinders right now. Uh, the sky should be the limit. There should be no opponent where they shouldn't feel like they have a chance to win. With that being said, I, I don't think they win. Baltimore has been, to me, far and away the best team in in football for the entire season. 
Look what they've done at home to good teams all year. Lamar's the MVP of the league. This defense is flat out awesome. The crowd's going to be on fire. One of the tougher places to play in all of football. This was a very, very big win and a statement type win for a rookie in CJ Stroud. And it was awesome to see. Crowd was great in Houston. Yeah, too. Crowd, crowd was awesome. I think that runs out against an absolute juggernaut in Baltimore. But how do you feel? You know, Baltimore's had three weeks rest. The Texans have a game under their belt. I don't know how that bodes into play, but it's, I think Baltimore wins this game and pretty convincingly, too. And I hate to this say is- that. This is an interesting game because I it feels like it was last season, but this is actually a rematch from week one of the NFL this yeah. year. The Texans have grown enormously since then, right? That was C.J. Stroud's first game in the NFL. Texans had a bad offensive performance. But one of the things that stands out to me about that game, actually, is that was one of the Ravens' worst offensive performances of the whole season. The Texans and D'Amico Ryans, I mean, the Ravens put up 25. It wasn't a knockout performance but Lamar Jackson 170 yards zero touchdowns one interception no rushers over 40 yards so the Texans defense has shown at least initially that they can hang with the Ravens offense so I think the line's probably right to be opening at about nine and a half but the Texans have the kind of offense sort of like the Packers as we were saying when you've got a young quarterback and a young team that believes in themselves I don't think they're going to be scared and when you come in with that belief this Ravens team has had they've had some stinker games this season. It's not impossible they have one more. This reminds me a little bit as well, uh, as kind of like the Cowboys, Cowboys Packer game. Baltimore similar to Dallas. There's some pressure on them. Oh, 100%. because we know how they have performed in the postseason. The last time they're the number one seed, Tennessee went in there and kicked the crap out of them. Lamar hasn't been a great postseason player. And now you have Houston, who anything beyond this point is just serious gravy. They've done what you know above and beyond what they were but the, supposed and, to, and do. they don't know it. They don't realize but, it. But yeah, so they're they're just they're coming in here and you know guns blazing, you have nothing to lose. Baltimore's got the pressure. I think it's similar to Green Bay and Dallas. Well, what I want to see from from Houston this game, and when did when did the game start to turn against the Browns? It was really, as I said before, on the pick six. But as you watch that game early on, Flacco's picking them apart and no one's getting to him. He's just having his way with Njoku, Amari Cooper, even though Cooper got a little banged up. Uh, but then they turned up the heat and this Houston defense started attacking him. And when when the, when Will Anderson pins his ears back and goes after the quarterback, I mean, it's a, it's a different team here uh, when the defense starts making plays. I took a look. The edge pass rushers, the win rate rankings this year, goes Micah Parsons one, then Miles Garrett, number three in the league is Will Anderson. And then you all only have to go down to number six to find Jonathan Greenard there. So they have you know, they have a pair of nasty rushers. Containing Lamar Jackson is a much easier said than done. But they have guys who can get after the quarterback. Like, the defense can make plays, and I think that's what's com- going to come down to. Are they able to force one, maybe two turnovers uh, on this Ravens offense that's been really efficient the entire season? Then on the other, on the other side of the ball, when you watch C.J. Stroud right now, he seems to have a little bit of that, you know, that him and Jordan Love are from, you know, I don't know what's going on, but they put the ball wherever they want every single time. And the Houston weapons, like, where are they coming from? You know, Nico Collins earlier in the year, we were joking around that we were kind of making fun of what they had in Houston. And, and right now, he looks like a serious number one. Devin Singletary, I said in the reaction show, you know, rejuvenated his career. Dalton Schultz is catching 40, and he's very good, but... Dalton Schultz, 40-yard touchdowns. Like, this Houston offense shouldn't be overlooked by Baltimore at all. Like, no, I mean, Baltimore, they're going to score their points. Uh, I think they finish as the best, the best offense in football, or second best, if I'm not wrong. But Houston, a team who can score and, and, and probably keep up with them. A lot of other teams can't. Houston has that firepower right now, somehow, to be able to do so. And let's not forget, by the numbers, the Texans have the third best run defense in the entire NFL this year. And if you want the secret to stopping the Ravens, it is slowing down that run defense, forcing Lamar to drop back as a passer and getting after it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think Houston's as scary as they come. I really do. You know, they're not they're not a juggernaut. We all know that. But when you're talking about a wild card team, or not, not even a wild card division winner, they feel like a wild card. But uh, when you're talking about a young team like this that all believe they can get the job done uh, with a head coach who's you know they love playing for, he loves his players. 
I don't want to go against CJ Stroud right now. I do not want to play him at all. And I, I think they're going to go in there and give the Ravens a game. This Stroud's not going to get blown out in this situation. We'll have a lot more to talk about. Um, we just wanted to hit on the Texans a little bit because it's it's unbelievable. Um, real quick for five minutes here, while we're talking about these these Texans and Packers who are kind of on similar paths so far on their way into the playoffs. If you had to pick between the two of them right now, like, who do you, who's a more dangerous team the rest of the way through? I'd go I'd go Green Bay. Uh, done, again, very similar. Two good quarterbacks, decent weapons who are succeeding from their quarterbacks, playing how well they are. I give it to the Packers because I am I'm a huge Aaron Jones guy. I like the run game. Singletary's good, and Houston's got a good run game for sure. But I trust Green Bay's a little bit more. They're a little bit more uh, three dimensional on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, whereas Houston, I feel would kind of in a, in a big game on the road would re, would really rely on a on a big game from Stroud. Mm-hmm. Whereas Love can take some of the pressure off himself by giving the ball to Aaron Jones and watching him go for 100 yards and a touchdown. Singletary lacks that more so than Aaron Jones does. So I give it to the Packers because they're run game with Aaron Jones. Okay. On the other hand, though, you do have to think about the defenses. And while the Packers defense played pretty well against the Cowboys, their defense has been an enormous vulnerability for them all season. Meanwhile, the Texans defense, they're not the 49ers. They're not the Ravens. They're not the best in the NFL. But they've had a consistently solid defense throughout the year. They're excellent against the run, opposite of the Packers there. They're pretty good against the pass. They get plenty of sacks. So I think the Texans defense is actually something that when you have a quarterback who makes a mistake or two, or you get the inevitable three and out, because regardless of what Jordan Love would have you believe, you can't score a touchdown on every single drive, every single game. Sometimes you need your defense to do something. So... I know I'm kind of a defense guy. This is my reputation. This is what I really love watching in the NFL. But D'Amico Ryan's in the Texans defense impresses me enough that when you've got two quarterbacks that played basically the same, I'm giving it to the team with the better defense. And when I say basically the same, <laughs> yeah, here's what I that, mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jordan Love, 16 for 21. CJ yes, Stroud, yes, yes, 16 yes, for 21. Yes. Love, 272 yards, Stroud, 274. Both three touchdowns, zero interceptions, both perfect passer ratings. Nearly. I mean, nearly. these guys are the same. No, nearly identical. perfect. Like literally 157.2. Identical. Yeah, basically basically identical stat lines in this one. I do think that the Packers are a more dangerous team at this point in time, and I'll say that because of the offense, the weapons that they have around. Uh, we, we've said multiple times now, the Packer receiver room goes four or five deep. Um, and Houston, you know, they have weapons, but it does feel like Nico Collins has been carrying the receiver room there since the tank Dell injury and Noah Brown. Uh, I can't even remember. I, I, he's, he's banged up too right now. Um, so I think that this Packer offense, not that, you know, I still think CJ Stroud's a little better than Jordan love, even though you know, it's, 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 it's neck Close. and neck right here. I mean, we're talking about two top seven quarterbacks in football, um, which is just absurd that we're even saying that. Uh, but between the two of them at the moment, I think this Packer offense, I mean, look, listen to this in the, in the Cowboy game. Here's how their drives went. Touchdown, punt, touchdown, 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 touchdown. <laughs> and then they punted a couple times at the end of the game when it was over. Yeah, like that the, is, that's sick. The Packers receiver room goes deeper. Like they have three or four real solid weapons for Jordan Love to pick and choose from. So I do think the Packers are a more dangerous team and they're hotter coming into this. Uh, when it comes to who I think has a better chance of getting to the Super Bowl, though, the 49ers to me are the best team. Oh, man, I don't know, actually. Because the Ravens, Ravens are playing the Ravens well. Are better than the Niners. Would you rather? Yeah. What, what's an I, easier I path? I think there's a better chance that the Packers yeah, beat no, San Fran. Yeah, no, I do, Fran. too. Because if the Packers beat San Fran, I like their chances in the championship game against Detroit or Tampa or Philly. Like the Texans got to go Baltimore and then Buffalo or Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think these are two two teams that are leading similar journeys throughout the playoffs here. Um, and the last question we'll have before we, we move off of these two teams, you know, we, we talked a lot about them at the, off the top here and they've been our biggest fan bases. So, you know, that we appreciate all the, everyone who's been listening. If you were starting a team tomorrow, Jack, you're starting a team tomorrow for the 2024 NFL season, Jordan Love or CJ Stroud, they're both on the board. Who are you taking? I take CJ Stroud. Uh, the, our, our Packers fan base won't like that. Well, I think, they I, understand though. I, I think Jordan Love is flat out awesome. Uh, getting him in this jersey too, but like, but to win a <sighs> to win a big 
big game, like a do or die must win game. Who do I want as my quarterback? I take CJ Stroud. Is it close? I think he's a little more talented. I think it's very close. Uh, I know Love hasn't made a mistake in a long time, <laughs> but I'd still look at Ziggy's face. I still, I still <laughs> trust. I trust CJ Stroud to make a mistake less than uh, Jordan yeah. Love. I'm just, I'm taking the guy who went on the road and beat the second best defense in the NFL. Well, you're a Packer just fan. Saying. I mean, that makes yeah, you're just a Packer saying. fan. You're a Packer fan. <laughs> I mean, I would take. Mason I see. Rudolph. I see a fact. Okay, I see okay, a fact, okay, and the, okay. here's what the fact is. Right, close. the the fact is Jordan Love is better. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Hey, producer Zach, we we said we wanted to hear from you a little bit this episode. I feel like a lot of the fans who have been listening, as we've had a little surge lately, <laughs> haven't heard producer Zach's voice as much as they should lately. Yeah, the fans, Which, like it might be Zach for the too. better because producer Zach, you never know what he's going <laughs> to yeah, say. Yeah, he is a little bit of a wild card. He's a little <laughs> bit like uh, you know Pat mcafee has been going Stroud, off. But. Stroud or Tua. <laughs> Stroud or Tua? Oh, well, Zach's Stroud. off the Tua train. Yeah, I'm yeah. off the Tua train. Zach, Zach was begging for Kirk Cousins the other night. Yeah. Stroud or Love? Stroud or Love? Oh, no, you should have seen it. When when we were watching the Dolphin Chief game, Zach was begging for Kirk Cousins, essentially. He's like, oh, I'll take Kirk. I'll take Kirk any day of the week. It's like, now you come he, back. Yeah, he comes back, yeah. So, <laughs> CJ Stroud or Jordan Love, Zach? If you uh, could replace Tua in Miami next year. Uh, Stroud. I'm with you. I, I think it is r- really... If I were ranking quarterbacks in the league... I would probably have what Mahomes, Lamar, Allen, Burrow, Stroud five, then like Herbert six and, and love seven right now. It's I think it's that close. Am I a fool? I'm sitting here wearing this shirt and I'm picking CJ Stroud. Oh, see, I think you're, you're Stroud's the right you're answer. No, no, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. I mean, what Jordan Love just did this week on the road. No, no, he's I, been great. They've both been great, but CJ Stroud. Yeah, I, Jordan Love's my answer. How great of a clicking. Super Bowl matchup would that be? I'm staring here at this Packers, watch. Packers helmet, Superman. I, uh, Jordan Love's my answer. Jordan As, Love. I'd lo- I would love to see the Packers get crushed by San Francisco this week. Um, but a matchup between the, the Texans and the Packers would just be a great game to watch. Yeah, it would. For our show, too. Huge value. Our fans Texans. would go back and forth at it. crazy. What if they both beat... Bolt, one beats Baltimore and the other one beats... The 49ers. Like, how, how do you have the discussion again? Our like, show's popping off. It's, like, I mean, yeah. Like, how do you have the discussion? Then, then, then we'll see more fans start to listen because there might be something to it. Like, there might be something beyond football at that point where, you yeah, know, like, like, it's funny. Our biggest fan bases are going the furthest. Are, are, and not not just going far, but going far despite expectations of being bad. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's almost so, like someone said to Biko Ryans was the coach of the year. And oh, Ziggy said somebody else was going to be. Let us know in the comments section, Texans and Packers fans who are watching. <laughs> Isn't that, that's what a stupid question for me. Let us know. Who would you take? CJ Stroud or Jordan Love? <laughs> yeah, Texans and Packers. I'll be, I'll be honest. Watching. I just, just, just want to see the fights. I want to see a fight yeah, between look, look, look you, the, the fan though. bases are so nice, the Texans and the Packers. See them get a little bit more feisty. They, I don't even think they would. Play. They'd be like, oh, you know, love it. And it's true. Like, they're both great quarterbacks. I want to see the Packers fan who says CJ Stroud, though. I mean, the Packers fans, I think some of them would t- would rather have Stroud, but nah, nah, you can't right now with the way Love's been. You can't trade yeah, him for no, anyone. Yeah, Packers fan, no. Okay, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on here. Jack, we want to hear about you going to this Lions bar now. You are, you are in New York City with all the Detroit fans who have been waiting 30 years to see a playoff win when Jared Goff, actually, I don't even want to skip to the end here. Throughout that game, what was the emotion like? In the bar. And where was the bar? Oh, this was this was one of the more fun nights I've had in a while, to be totally honest with you. Uh, the bar was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan called Bailey's Corner Pub. And it's just so crazy. It's it's Upper East Side is a very quiet area. Mm-hmm. You know, not much going on. It's not like Midtown. And I prefer that. And you walk into a bar and all of a sudden there's 300 Lions fans <laughs> all packed into this place <laughs> Everyone's drinking, having a good time. We're all making friends with each other. Like it was, it was awesome. And then you know the "Let's Go Lions" chants were loud. Uh, I was having a great time. It was my my bandana, a Calvin Johnson jersey. I was meeting people left and right. People were buying me drinks, and it got so loud on the Jameer Gibbs touchdown to go up fourteen three. This place was a madhouse and i was legit a lions fan in that moment uh i mean the desperation in that room for a win is like and then, <laughs> you've never seen anything like it from lions fans but then every single one of these fans too when it was 24 23 and the rams had the ball they're, they're saying like this is it it's over like this we're the lions we, we're not gonna win this game that's it and then 
when they won the game, I saw 45 people bawling their eyes out. Including and, you. And including, including me. Jack, they, was on. Including me because they didn't cover. I took a funny it was video. It Lions that minus three. Uh, <laughs> but it was like nothing I'd ever seen. Like, it's like these these guys win a football game and it's, you know, it's like the birth of their child or their wedding day. <laughs> it was insane. Like, I couldn't even describe it. It, it was, it was to say there were grown men crying and it was an awesome experience. It really was. I asked I our good friend. I watched like 200 Lions fans in a small, compact bar. I'll be there next week, too. I you know, asked our, uh, our good friend, Tom. We've been shouting out Tom Monroe a lot lately, but he, you know, he listens to the show all the time, gives us the pulse of Lions Nation, and that's why I asked him today. He's like, I, I, was like I, I need to know what's the feeling amongst Lion, Lion fans right now. And he said, the concern that I have is that we are all acting like we just won the Super Bowl. That's what it was like. And no, no. And that, that's, that's the one concern I'd have. Who knows what's going on in that locker room, you know? But we know, I hope that the Lions nation as a whole, and I'm not necessarily rooting for Detroit because they're an NFC North rival, but it's nice to see, it's nice to see them have some success because everyone, at, at some point, you need to have it. But with the way that that win, you could see an explosion in the stadium of just like, oh, finally, even on the, some of the players' faces, you know, you could see a, a monkey being lifted off their shoulder. When you have that kind of a win, and it means that much to, to not just the players and the fans, like the entire city, the state, they're going crazy. I wonder how that carries over next week because the job's not done. And you are a serious Super Bowl threat right now with the way it's playing out in the NFC. That's my only concern with the Lions. I, I get that folks might be worried about the fans and fair enough. I will tell you who I'm not worried about at all. Dan Campbell. If there is one thing about Dan Campbell I am confident in is that he will have his team ready to play. So no it's the reason that. why it's the reason why they didn't rest anyone in week 18, right? This team does not have an off switch even when maybe they should. This team is going to come out, they're going to play their hardest against whatever crappy NFC opponent they draw and they're going to win. Yeah, it's that simple. Beat Philly or the Bucks. Like I have no doubt in my mind about that, but it was funny. So I was at the bar with my buddy Alex who's a massive Lions fan and he was saying he's like like this is this is the game. He's like we just have to win this game. Whatever happens after this happens. I know. I know. That's what know. he was saying. He's like this this is the game we we have to win. Whatever happens this after this is like. But whatever. they can win. But they they can, can do this. So they can. They have a home game now because a team they're better than. And then the NFC championship. <laughs> and then there's a world where they're hosting the NFC championship game. And it was fun. So you know how Laporta was just was ruled in like last minute or activated like touchdown. last minute. Well, his first catch, like in the first quarter, whenever it was, the bar erupted. Oh, they, it, they love it, him. Yeah, it was awesome. No, the, this the storylines in the NFL playoffs that are going on right now, and we'll see what happens in the Eagles-Tampa game, but in the NFC, let's just pretend Tampa Bay wins. You have the resurgence of Baker Mayfield. You have the Lions, you know, the 30-year drought is over. The Packers coming out of nowhere with their third freaking franchise quarterback, you know, the Hall of Famer. Um, it is... It is going to be a great end to this run here, or end to the season. But, dude, Detroit, I'm telling you, with the way they look and, and the way they play, they're a you know, tough team. Yeah, they really do embark Campbell's vision. I, I think that this is a team that's going to the NFC Championship game. I really, I really do. I have a hard I, I time seeing going to the Super Bowl. I have a hard time seeing them losing next weekend. Um, but that is the one concern I have is, is maybe a little letdown spot here. Ziggy, uh, real quick, and then we'll get off Detroit. Do you think that next week, if they get Philly or Tampa, regardless, do you think they're winning that game? I'd have them as seven and a half point favorites at a minimum. Oh, Yo, lines are out. I'm so not worried. They'd be, they'd be minus two and a half against Philly and minus six against the Bucs. Yeah, don't, oh. don't let the fact that this game was close against the Rams fool you. This Rams team was good. Oh, I think the Rams hot. won. They were going to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, I think the Rams right now are better than Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I think if the Rams had won, they would also. I, I believe either of them would have beat the Eagles or Bucks. I, I wanted to ask you one thing. I forgot about this. When McVay decided to punt at the end of the game on the 4th and 14, I have to imagine everyone in that bar was thrilled. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because I, I was sitting there watching going, how are you not... Fourth and 14 here. I know the Lions have struggled a bit in the second half, but, dude, you're not getting the ball back. Yes. With, the way, with the way this Lions yes. offense is capable no, It of was a huge sigh of relief. And then after the... Uh, How about that first down, the second and nine? After the first first down of the drive, 
everyone started to feel it. People were like, holy crap, we, we're going to win a playoff game. And then the um, I'm guessing on that Amon Ra, it was just um, zoo. You, you heard a bunch of like, that's it. That's it. That's it. It was it was incredible. I was hammered off my off my. <laughs> they would have lost if they gave the ball back to, to Stafford again. Yeah, they would have. And I think everyone probably knew it. In that, in, wow, Boy, that must have been a great feeling. That was pissed. I had minus three. Zach, do you know the Dolphins are now the team with the longest streak, <laughs> the longest playoff Zach, drought? Zach's about to pass out. Zach's over. getting catching he strays he over here. Be bothered. Okay, last last thing here. I've read it like eight times today. Last thing before we wrap up this show, I wanted to ask you guys. Um, and I guess I'm sorry I'm going to this spot, Zach. But the Chiefs, you know, they did. Yep. All right. Let's end. They the did show, beat please. the Dolphins. Thank you. What I what I just wanted to ask you guys is now that they're heading to Buffalo, it's Mahomes' first road playoff game in his career. Somehow that that's one of the most unbelievable stats in football. That this dude has won two Super Bowls. You play, been in the league for five years, gone to the play or six, gone to the playoffs every time he started, and has never stat. had a road. What it doesn't be Brady stat? No Brady stat. No, no. But I mean, it's one of the most unbelievable though that he's never been on in a road playoff game. Now goes to Buffalo. Continues the story against Josh Allen and the Bills. That rivalry only grows right now. With the way they looked against Miami, I didn't think they would. They looked like world beaters or anything, but it reminded me of who the Chiefs were, and that when when it matters, they can show up. Are you good over here? What's yeah, going I'm just yawning. Oh. <laughs> and it looks like when it matters, you know, you still get this this team that comes out with fire. Are they are they back in the contender status to you, Ziggy? I know that some people are saying they're they're going to be gone immediately. Are you viewing them right now as uh, maybe maybe they're the biggest threat to the Ravens? I am not ready to say that this offense is back and fixed because they did well against the injured Dolphins defense. Okay, but here's the fact: their defense is elite, and their offense all season has been good enough for them to win a lot of games. And you saw some signs of life from the offense, right? Rasheed Rice had a really excellent game. The run game was pretty good. But I think they've got a decent chance against Buffalo. And if you think they've got a decent chance against Buffalo, say better than 40%, now they've got a better than 40% chance of making the championship game. And anyone that's in the championship game is a Super Bowl contender. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean, I uh, after watching this game, like I said, against the Steelers, I think the Steelers handed Buffalo the game in the first quarter with the two turnovers. The Chiefs are likely not going to do that. Uh, I don't think the Bills' offense really torched the Steelers' defense, and this is without T.J. Watt, and the Chiefs' defense, I believe, is better than the Steelers' defense. So now, if you let Mason Rudolph go up and down the field, now it's Mahomes and Kelsey and an elite defense. You just need some life from the offense. I, I think I like the Chiefs. I mean, you're telling me that an offense with Mahomes and Kelsey just playing decently isn't as good as Mason Rudolph and George Pickens and Deontay Johnson, mm-hmm. and they got a better defense without TJ Watt. I'm taking the Chiefs. Yeah, and you know they, they have the coaching advantage with Reed too. It's it's going to be a great game. But I I've thought watching this for the first time in a, in a while this year, uh, you know it might it might be time to fear them again if you're rooting for another AFC team. And I understand that the Dolphins were injured. I understand that it was zero degrees. Uh, there's just something about them come playoff time where I'm not counting them out <laughs> until they're officially out. They have a little bit of that Golden State Warriors vibe to them to me where you know, they're champions, they're winners. They they do this all the time. Um, there, there's something there. I, I, I'm excited to break down this game more later in the week, but I was just curious where you guys stood on that. All right, we're wrapping up the show here. This is the last thing we're going to talk. For you guys, the biggest winner, biggest loser you had of the weekend. You uh, go, go first, Iggy. I got to think. So I don't want to pick a team that uh, won a game because obviously like, you know, the Packers were big winners. The Texans were big winners. So I want to go something a little bit less obvious. For me, the biggest winner is teams like the Chicago Bears. Does that sound a little weird? (laughs) Yes, but here is something that these teams have shown this weekend. If you're looking for an unconventional takeaway, if you get the right rookie quarterback or the right first year starter immediately, you can have a lot of success, right? We saw the Texans completely turn around a franchise where it looked like they were going to be in a long rebuild and suddenly they're competitive. The Packers just put in the right quarterback and you can win a playoff game too. So if you're a team that's looking for a quarterback next offseason, you think you're going to have to draft somebody, you're worried there's not enough around them. You don't need the world around a player. You need a quarterback. 
Biggest loser, San Francisco 49ers. They now have to face the hottest team in the NFL instead of hoping that <laughs> the a, Packers what get knocked out. Strange. So I was going to say the Niners are my biggest winner because the Cowboys are gone. Uh, the Eagles are They're not losing. scared of the Cowboys. Yeah, but I mean, now you get, in, you, get the, you get an inexperienced Packers team at home. Then you play like the Lions. But I, I'd probably say my biggest winner is, is the Lions. I mean, you win your first playoff game in 30 years. Now you get another home game against a team you're better than. Like, you should reach the NFC Championship game. And at that point, anything's possible. It's Detroit. And who's your loser? And biggest loser... Yeah, the freaking Steelers. That team stinks. No, it's uh, the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I think this is easy here. Cowboys. There are some great, great candidates here where the Packers, you know, had a generational performance. Square Paul coming out. Like, right this now. is it for the Cowboys. The, McCarthy is done now. Like, Dak's being questioned. Like, this was it. You lost Ooh. by 20 points at home in the playoffs. It, this it's is over. a great game for the Cowboys. They they won this weekend. They got to move off Mike McCarthy. Yeah, now they might get Belichick w. or Tomlin or someone. Belichick <laughs> That's just, true. Uh, talk with the Falcons. Yeah, but if, He's if, not the, Cow- if the Cowboys Falcons. job opens up There's with talks, the Cowboys job opens up. There are whoa, you, we're talking about big names. We'll, we'll have to talk about this later this week because that that Cowboy opening once McCarthy's gone is, I mean, that team's loaded and with the right guy they can they can be great. Uh, I thought it was very easy despite great candidates like the Packers having generational performance from yet another quarterback in a massive game. Huge winners, uh, Texans dominate Cleveland and and their in-state rival loses huge winners it's Detroit though yeah, 30 years we're talking about yeah. people you know if people people have lived you know a third of their lives waiting for them, maybe even less I like we're talking about an all-time win for the city of Detroit here um they're the winners biggest losers are definitely the Cowboys no, there, there was there was a 28 year old that I met in in this this Lions bar this week and I'm three years younger than him and I have attended nine playoff games in Pittsburgh. This guy has not seen a playoff win in his lifetime up until now. They're the biggest winners. I guess when we said winners and winner, winners and losers, you meant just uh, check the box score and tell folks what they already saw. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I can replace Google. I can do it. Well, all right. There, there you have it for our wild card reaction show. We're going to have a lot of content coming out this week because look, it's playoff season, and there's a lot to talk about right now. We'll and we love the Packers. And no, well, no, 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 no. And we love no, the Packers. No, it, it, like this is this is. I can't tell you when I looked in the mirror with this, with this jersey on how absolutely miserable I was. Yeah, sure. I can't wait to get this thing off. Uh, but thanks again for everyone who's been listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We're we're chasing down 10k right now. I think it's on the table. It's for post Super Bowl. That, that's a, a a high goal, but I think it's on the table um, for everyone who's been listening. We really appreciate it. Please leave comments. Again, we see all of them. We try to respond to as many as we can. Um, yeah, and go check go check out the, your Jordan Love shirt for and give merch ideas. If you have any T-shirts you like, we'll design T-shirts. It's, it's easy. It's, all right, we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Paul Farrington Show.